Aina, welcome. Could you please first maybe introduce yourself and tell me with what film you are here at the Film Festival of Rotterdam? So my name is Anna Sindjarovic uh, and I'm here with my debut feature film. Uh, this is Take Me Somewhere Nice. It's played in the title competition. Yep. Maybe let's first start with the film. It's about a Dutch Bosnian girl that goes from Holland to Bosnia to find her estranged father who is taken ill. Um, where does the story come from? And the film is like a road movie, so can you talk maybe a bit of the journey of you realizing this film? Yes, um, so the idea of the plotline is actually very simple. Uh, the girl going back to the country of her origins. Um, uh, she has a migrant history because her parents uh, are both from Bosnia, although she's a Dutch, she's a Dutch girl. And I wanted to um, explore this relationship between uh, the migrants and their home country, because I think there's this image of uh, when a person has two um, countries in their background, there's this image that they have best of both worlds. But it's, uh, in reality, I think uh, uh, having a different home country means a lot of complexities in your life. And I wanted to show that the relationship between the migrant and the home country is very complex. So this is why I uh, chose to uh, tell this story about this girl who goes back to this country and she tries to make some kind of connection with this country, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more difficult than, uh, than you would expect. And she ends up um, coming from one absurd situation into the other. Um, and Yes, so in the end of the film, she's moving towards, uh, you could say, an acceptance of, of the complexity of, uh, of it all. What I like about those absurd encounters that are in the film is that they have a lot of humor and it feels like this quite serious subject, which you could also tackle in a very dramatic way. It seems like you approach it in a very humorful, a way as if it's almost a comedy but not quite. Can you talk a little bit about the way that you process this this story and how do you what kind of role humor plays in this whole? Yes. So in this film I wanted to explore different themes like uh, uh, like identity, uh, like migration, like uh, east west uh, tensions and I wanted to do this in a very playful way because I feel uh, the way that we, for example, talk about migrants uh, is sometimes, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes very, um, there's just one tone, tone of voice and uh, it's, it's a very sad one. And I felt that um, we needed, with this film, I, I really wanted to find a different kind of entrance uh, when talking about these topics. I wanted to use humor and I created a very stylized world uh, because uh, I wanted to, um, to show the audience that uh, the world that I am portraying in this film is a construction. And by showing that the world around us is a construction, I hope that the viewer will feel that, uh, that another construction is also possible. So this is why I use this absurdity in this film, just to show that reality is just one absurd uh, possibility. And I hope that the viewer will look at um, the people portrayed and they will think, okay, but our society and our world is changeable and there are different ways of looking at it. Um, and especially when it comes to looking at uh, people with uh, uh, identity issues or uh, with migrant history. I think it's important to see that it's not only sadness and tears, there are different ways of looking at it. And by that, um, yes, I think it's, it's also, um, because what happens when you look at minorities only in a sad way is, is that you, in my opinion, um, you take some of their power away, you victimize them. So I think this is a film with 
anti-heroes, so to say. Uh, you know, you have lazy characters, you have self-absorbed characters. Uh, all the characters seem to be lost in this bubble of some kind of materialistic world. They, are, uh, they don't know what to do, they are not heroes. And for me, I always identify much more with anti-heroes than I identify with heroes. I would ra much rather be the Joker than Batman, for example. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to portray migrants and, uh, I mean, this is not the only thing they are. They are just also boys, girls, just humans as uh, anti-heroes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're talking about making the film stylized to highlight this absurd construct of the migrant identity as only being a construct. Then let's talk about the construction of the film because you're talking about this absurd stylized version of reality. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you approach that in terms of the filmmaking and the editing and maybe also the music? Because it seems like you really highlight the absurd through the filmmaking, but how did you exactly approach that? What are we? What do we have to picture before we see your film to feel like what that absurdity means for you? Yes. So when I made the decision that I'm that I was going to play with this absurdity, and this is, I mean, this constructing this this um, making this estrangement, uh, making this est estrangement tangible for the audience. Uh, so not making, not using cinema of empathy. Empathy was not the highest goal, uh, but uh, more uh, alienation and humor uh, and, and getting us to think about the world. That was, th that was my goal. And, and uh, so I, I had these ideas from, from Bertolt Brecht. Um, and then I had to think, because he writes for theater, uh, and, he, and I had to think, okay, how am I going to use these ideas and bring them to cinema nowadays? Uh, I have some, uh, of course, I, I, uh, I'm a big uh, cinema lover. I, I have a lot of uh, filmmakers that I look up to. One of them is, for example, uh, uh, Fassbinder. Uh, he also uses these ideas of uh, Brecht to comment on uh, the society. And he does this in a playful and very, and he uses a lot of humor to do this. So I watched a lot of, of, of his work and um, uh, the, the tools that I used, for example, in the film were uh, kind of a detached way of acting. Uh, so the actors are more puppets than, uh, than, uh, than that they are some kind of a... I mean, th my, my goal was not to make them uh, hyper-realistic. Uh, I, I, with the acting, I really wanted to show that it's just people who are saying words, and the words are also thought up by someone. They did not invent those words. So you really feel that there's also a barrier between them and the words that they produce. And then you start to think about those words and you think, hmm, are, are these words really theirs? Or who put those words out there in the world? Because I think this is how, how I move uh, uh, through the world, I guess. Uh, I, I have all kinds of thoughts but when you really think about where do these thoughts come from, then uh, y you find out that there are a lot of thoughts that don't come from, your, from yourself. You just pick them up, you know, along, along the road. And, uh, and this is actually pretty random <laughs> in a way. So sometimes mm -hmm. I also even think, you know, I'm, I'm th I, I even catch myself thinking, or asking myself the question, am I really thinking? <laughs> or am I just reproducing all these streams of, you know, thoughts, opinions, whatever, that I just read and, you know, that I decide to, decide to read even within my own bubble, you know? And so, so this is in terms of acting. Then, of course, I, I made a very stylized world. Um, and uh, we used, uh, uh, the camera uh, we used, for example, we used the 25 millimeter lens a lot of times, and and with this lens, uh, you have this, you get this little bit of detached feeling because it's not the 35 millimeter where you feel like this is the way the eye looks. No, this with this lens, you feel like the world looks a bit wobbly and a bit weird. And then we used um, 
uh, alienating. So I, also in the product production design, for example, we used very like we made a very minimalist production design, and we played with this idea of kitsch, for example. So kitsch was a very important thing, uh, important part of the of, of creating this this world. I didn't want I didn't want to make a world that is uh, too tasteful. You know, you would think. Uh, for me, those sometimes when when you make a film that is very tasteful, it 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 becomes too too much art, and when it becomes too much art, then I don't feel that I I have a relationship with with something. I've, I I have to feel something. I have to feel the world as well. So we use this this idea of 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 kitsch uh, to. Uh, but 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 we did it in a very minimalist way. So you feel this world is very stylized. Um, this is a thing we did. Um, so in terms of, I mean, and of course we 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 used non-diegetic music. Um, yes. 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 This is this also. I mean, I think this four by three ratio, which is of course, I mean, we already know this as. As a very, I mean, it's it's already a cliche art house <laughs> ratio. We know this, but the, uh, one of the reasons why I also used this ratio was uh, because I, I I wanted to make a film about the new generation, and this um, it's not even my generation. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm even a bit older than the characters I'm portraying, but the characters that I'm portraying are part of this Instagram generation. And uh, so this is the four by three, yeah. uh, exactly, uh, had to do with that as well. Can you talk about the casting, about finding these youngsters for this new generation? Uh, I think Alma, the Dutch girl, the Dutch Bosn Bosnian girl, is pretty amazing in the way she is your puppet, you could say. Uh, where did you find her? And also, what was it like for you to bring her to Bosnia and to have her play with these, I presume, are fully Bosnian actors or yes. puppets? Yes, they are, they're all puppets. They're not actors. <laughs> no, I think they're... No, I mean, um, there was a really huge amount of trust uh, needed uh, for them to become my puppets. So they were very rebellious puppets, I can tell you this. They were not always liking liking it, you know? And uh, actually, so we've got these three main characters. We have Alma, we, we, uh, Alma. we have her nephew, uh, Emir, and we have his best friend, uh, Denis. And, and Lazar, who played Denis, he's the only professional actor uh, in the sense that he, he's not even I mean, he's professional, but he's just in the second year of uh, uh, of, of, the, of the acting academy in Sarajevo. Um, but the other boy, he was a lift maker when we uh, when we met him. So he sometimes he was he worked sometimes as an extra, and I was looking for the guy that would play Emir. Uh, and I, it was so hard to find him. I, I looked, you know, I've seen so so many young uh, Bosnian actors and I just I felt like uh, because this is a character that is not it's he's not very approachable at all and most of the times the actors that go to the acting academy that choose to do these kind of things they are very much out there in the world you know and they want to be seen but it had to be a boy that didn't want to be seen and um, so uh, after extensively looking at uh, actors in, uh, in in Sarajevo, young actors, we decided to just look at extras and see what was going on with, with the extras. Um, and this is where I found uh, Ernat. Uh, and he had to, he, he, he was in doubt whether he wanted to play this role uh, for a long time. I really, really, really had to convince him because he did not, I mean, being an actor was not something that he as, uh, aspired basically, you know, and, and this made me want him even more <laughs> uh, because he was not that available. And Alma was a, yes, she was a different thing because, uh, of course, she has to be, she had to be Dutch and Bosnian at the same time. Uh, and, uh, I mean, the community of Bosnian diaspora is not that big. 
uh, here in the Netherlands. Uh, but also, there's this thing that you have, um, like like every community of diaspora, whether it's it's Bosnian, maybe Turkish or Moroccan or whatever, that lives in the Netherlands, you have these people who clinch together and they become a group. So there are a lot of Bosnian Dutch people here that are, you know, actually, uh, they invented this uh, little Bosnia <laughs> in, in, in the Netherlands and they still preserve that culture or, or the Yugoslavian culture, you could even say, that they left behind when they left behind Bosnia. Uh, but there's also the, uh, these other people who don't really fall into this Bosnian Dutch, Dutch group, but also don't really, don't 100% feel connected to the 100% Dutch people. And they fall in between and I think uh, Sara Luna falls falls in between. She's she's really uh, the way that I see her. She's uh, I I don't even think she's that Bosnian, uh, and she's not really Dutch either. Um, and I I think she's a very much uh, she's she's in that sense she's um, I, I think she's a girl that who represents a lot of people nowadays uh, in our globalized world, this new generation of people who are uh, falling in between, who don't want to identify with one country, uh, who are curious about, about the world, but who are also sometimes struggling with this in, in moments where they feel like suddenly they need to take sides. And uh, some and so when I when I met Saluna, I immediately felt it, felt this. I felt that she was a rebellious spirit, but also a little bit lost in this, you know, what am I? Who am I? And you know, all these identity questions. And because because she's a because she's a teenager, uh, and she's uh, in this uh, vague area of, of, uh, from child to adulthood, you could feel, you know, that. I, I was really rooting for her rebelliousness, you know, just just stay all of it, you know, instead of choosing. And I and um, I, I think she is a person who inspired me a lot during the making process of the film. I, I'm now thinking about maybe the invisible character of the film might be Bosnia itself, because you're talking about being torn between two things. And one of the lines in the film that's partly comedic, but also kind of melancholic is when a bus driver is talking about Bosnia and he says, what has Europe ever done for us? Nothing. And what has Russia ever done for us? Yeah. Also nothing. Yeah. So there's kind of like this, this complexity that you're talking about with the characters. You can also see it in the country that they're uh, journeying into. Can you talk about maybe yourself coming from Bosnia to the Netherlands and then going back to Bosnia to make a film about this place, what it was like for you to capture that complexity of the country? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I think uh, the film is not, for me the film is not as much about Bosnia as it is about just being between worlds. So for me it's actually a very Dutch film, <laughs> in a way. Because um, uh, the previous film I did, it was a short film, it was about a family coming to the Netherlands. And what I showed in this, in this uh, immigrant family, it, was, it happened to be a Bosnian family, uh, but what I showed in this film is uh, how complex these first steps of the integration process and how funny and hilarious and absurd uh, uh, these first steps uh, and all the steps thereafter uh, as well, by the way, but <laughs> are. Uh, so after making that film, uh, exploring the newcomer coming to a new country, I, I felt this urgency of, uh, yes, exploring what, what happens to the person living as a migrant in a country and their relationship with the country that's left behind. So, um, but at the same time, the country that I picked to depict in this film was Bosnia. So I had to deal with uh, specific things about, about Bosnia. And uh, um, this was, I, I, it was very hard finding a balance in that because uh, uh, like I just mentioned, I was, I was making a stylized world. So I'm 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 trying to make a world that 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 is in a way not existent, 
But at the same time, it takes place in Bosnia, and Bosnia does exist. So I really wanted to show in the film that I was making a, a construction of Bosnia. I'm not depicting Bosnian reality, I'm just depicting one person's view on the country. And of course, uh, um, I mean, uh, yes, the, uh, Bosnia has many dysfunctional sides, and this is very hurtful. Uh, so, uh, I mean, for example, 60% of youth is unemployed. That's, that's, that, that's a huge percentage. And I feel that uh, Bosnian youth is a bit um, discouraged to take their lives in their own hands um, and to change things. So, uh, so I really hope that they would watch a film like this and that they would say, you know what, uh, this whole construction, we don't like it. To become more rebellious, actually, because, yes, because at this moment, I think sadness is just taking over. And uh, I wanted to empower them uh, by, making, by making this film as well. Not only them, but also people, I mean, people everywhere, I guess. Um, so, uh, yes, but, but uh, I, and last thing I want to say about that, that uh, being in Bosnia, I mean, I am, I am very much Bosnian. I've, uh, I've, I, I've lived there for five years of my life. I have a very strong connection to that country. But at the same time, I'm, I'm so Dutch, you know, because I've, I've lived in the Netherlands. I, my, my, my English accent is Dutch, you know? <laughs> like everyone knows I'm Dutch-speaking, <laughs> English speaker, whatever. Um, so I, I was also aware that I was a foreigner coming. In a way, I'm also a foreigner in, in Bosnia. Uh, so I, I felt... Not, uh, I thought it was very important that it was not me. It would not be a film uh, about look. This is how uh, dysfunctional uh, Bosnia is. No, it's it, it's a film about this dual identity, and it happens to take place in two of the smallest countries in Europe, <laughs> the Netherlands and Bosnia. And uh, it could have, it could have also been just, you know, like, I don't know, uh, it could have been uh, Sweden and uh, uh, Turkey, you know, it could have, it, it's, but it, it, it was important that it was a Western country and an Eastern country. Final question. Your film is now in the Tiger competition of the 48th edition of the film festival in Rotterdam. Uh, you already said you're both like an international, you could say, a director and a domestic Dutch director. What does it mean for you to be in this international film competition at this international film festival in Rotterdam? Yes, so being in the Tiger competition here in Rotterdam means, means a lot to me because uh, I think uh, the, the Tiger competition is, uh, stands out because it's most uh, it's it's very da daring and experimental films are being shown in the tiger competition and um, and i think this film is doing something different and and something new so uh, i'm i'm just very happy to be following you know directors like uh, kelly richards or uh, Ilya Kuzanovsky, who had their films here, and, and those are directors I look up to very much. Uh, so, you know, being in their footsteps, yes, makes me feel very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you.